Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, remember that IRS tax topic regarding bad debts? The music you're hearing in the background is me on hold with Walmart.com. I decided to use Walmart as opposed to Amazon for ordering dog food because the prices are Walmart prices and they waive shipping. So I can get the regular store price and they do the delivery since the nearest Walmart is 85 miles away from my home. Uh, it hasn't been working out so well, especially with the rain on track has not delivered to the area, uh, claiming they can't find the address, even though I gave them point by point directions. Oh, well, life goes on. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the tax advisor. They're going to tell you about bad debts. A lot of people assume that I'm guessing that I'm attempting to commit fraud. See, that's what the courts are. You, they're using that word a lot. Fraudulent. Why? because they are trying to affect the business. They don't seem to understand that we don't advertise in the mainstream. Not yet. We decided to, give me one second while I take care of this call with Walmart. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, Walmart. Uh, basically, they were sending me something through OnTrack. OnTrack didn't deliver, I didn't find out about it. Now this was written March 1st, 2016. Deducting business bad debt. Okay, now, Many of you, as I told you, sole proprietor, it is not uncommon for high-income individual taxpayers to hold uncollectible or worthless bad debt, like the banks do, carefully tax planning that maximizes the business bad debt deduction to help minimize the taxpayer's overall economic loss. Ladies and gentlemen, if you got a charge-off or a write-off on your mortgage and you have it on your paperwork, you bring this information in the court. You tell the court, oh no, this is what businesses do on a regular basis. This shows that they are receiving some sort of benefit and they have not adjusted the account like the law requires. Because the law requires if they receive a benefit, they have to credit your account. You will see that in this article and you'll see it in the other articles. So this is tax advisor and normally I make you go to the beginning of the video to pull it up. This is the article by an attorney. Now hold on. Establishing a bona fide debt with a related business. Ladies and gentlemen, bona fide debt. That's why we talk about do 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 documentation. Let's continue. A bona fide debt is one arising from a debtor-creditor relationship based on a valid and enforceable obligation to pay at a fixed and determined amount of money. There's a regulation, ladies and gentlemen. I've never seen this regulation. I don't know where this regulation is, but you all are going to have to read this regulation. Let's see if we can find this regulation. Uh-oh, got to do that the right way. She likes it the right way, left way, right way, and way when I say go. You run for your life. Check me. Everything wanted... I'm sorry. Uh, as a matter of fact, there's a regulation, but we'll talk about it in a minute. Taxpayer, the taxpayer must be able to show documentation that it was the intent of the parties at the time of the transfer to create a debtor credit relationship. Yeah, you borrow money from me, you need to pay me back, mother. Okay, arbitration awards, debtor creditor, creditor, debtor creditor. Anyway, hold on. In other words, the taxpayer must be able to show that at the time of the transaction, he or she had a real expectation of repayment and that there was an intent to enforce the indebtedness. Do you not recall that's what the IRS says in business bad debt or personal bad debt on the tax topic 453? Let's continue. A formal loan agreement is not absolutely necessary to create a bona fide bad debt. So you don't need a loan agreement. Also, the giving of a note or other evidence of legally enforceable indebtedness is not in and of itself conclusive evidence of a bona fide debt. Yes, even though you have a note on your property doesn't mean that you owe any money to anybody. Let's continue. The fact that the debtor is a related business does not preclude a bad debt deduction by an individual taxpayer. If owner or related party loans made for legitimate business purposes become worthless, they are treated no differently than a debt to an unrelated party. Of course, this assumes that the loan meets the bona fide standard of a debtor credit relationship based upon a valid and enforceable obligation of paying a fixed and determinate period 
and it affects and determines the amount. Debts between related parties are generally subject to closer scrutiny than other debts. Meaning, if you are family members or if you're businesses and you're a subsidiary, you're going to get scrutinized. Okay? Distinguishing business bad debt from non-business bad debt. Ladies and gentlemen, I do need to let you know you are going to have to go to the regs, regulations, 166. You are going to have to go there. So, not Route 66, but Route 166. Look, a business bad debt often originates as a result of a credit sale to customers for goods sold and services provided. We don't care. If a sole proprietor sells goods or services on credit and the account receivable subsequently becomes worthless, a business bad debt deduction is permitted. If a sole proprietor sells goods and services and he extends credit, such as, pay attention, I want you all to understand this. It's called deferred payment. You defer payment until the future. That's what SATCOM has been doing from day one. All right. A business bad debt deduction is permitted, but only if the income arising from the creation of the receivables is previously included in the income. So if you're going to be doing that, you have to include the income. That's the accrual method. You have to include the income because you haven't received it yet. So they're talking about the accrual method, people. Thus, a cash basis taxpayer, I just said they're talking about the accrual method, didn't I? I don't read ahead. Those of you who've ever watched my videos know that I don't read ahead like y'all do. Y'all are taught to do that. I had to teach myself how to read again. I don't read ahead. Okay, just don't do it. I, 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 that's too much retraining. Okay, so I did not know it was going to talk about cash basis, but I told you I could read and understand they were talking about the accrual method. Now, a cash basis taxpayer, that's because you guys mostly list yourself as cash basis taxpayers. You need to stop that. A bad debt deduction is generally not allowed for uncollectible accounts receivable since these items are not normally included in income until received. Aww. Business bad debts can also take the form of loans to suppliers, clients, employees, and distributors. Additionally, a guarantor is allowed a business bad debt deduction for any payment made in the capacity of the guarantor if the reason for the guaranteeing of the debt was business. So let's say I loan money to my business. Okay, you see what I'm saying? I can claim a business bad debt if I, my business didn't pay me back. Here, the guarantor's payment results in a loan to the debtor, my business. And the taxpayer, me, is allowed a bad debt deduction once the loan, including the right to subjugation against the debtor, becomes partially or totally worthless. Oh, that's a worthless debt! So ladies and gentlemen, this is the regulation we've been looking for. This is the regulation you all are going to have to study. I'm giving you this information for free, 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 free. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, go throughout YouTube. Go throughout the websites. You know how long it took me to find this? Okay. Lord have mercy. Note, to claim a loss deduction, a taxpayer making a payment on a loan guarantee that becomes unrecoverable or worthless must receive reasonable consideration for entering into the guarantee agreement. For a guarantee of a non-family member debt, consideration can be either direct cash or property or indirect. Indirect consideration is determined in accordance with the normal business practices. For example, it may be in the form of an improved business relationship. For a guarantee of a family member's debt, however, the consideration must be direct cash or other property lent. It's time to do some studying, y'all. Loans to businesses owned by the taxpayer can also generate business bad debt if the loans were made to preserve the taxpayer's employment status and income earning potential. Ha <laughs> ha! Or in the course of the taxpayer's business buying and selling businesses. See, SACOM, that's what we do. Told you, I ain't never read this stuff before. I just knew I could do it. Debts that do not qualify as business bad debts are non-business bad debts and possibly gifts. Business reason must be the dominant motivation for the loan. Don't care about that because we can always go with that. Business lending money 
Don't care about that. Proving worthlessness. Let's prove worthlessness. The worthlessness of a debt is a question of fact. All pertinent evidence should be considered, including the value of any collateral and financial condition of the debtor. Proof of worthlessness is best established by a definable event demonstrating the loss of the value of the debt. Proof of the worthlessness of the debt? W. Man, I bet W. W is the sole proprietorship selling sophisticated security system. And it uses the accrual method of accounting. It uses the accrual method of accounting. It uses the accrual method of accounting. In March 2015, it sold $25,000 in security equipment to a retail store for $5,000 down. And the balance was due in 90 days. When the balance became due, W found that the customer had closed his doors and the owner could not be located. Oh, my stars. Subsequently, the correspondence was returned by the post office. That's the documentation, y'all. Proof that they notified the party and proof that the party didn't respond. You know what I'm saying? The cessation of business by a customer is an identifiable event that establishes proof of worthlessness in the amount due from the customer. Therefore, W. W. Bush should be entitled to $20,000 in bad debt deductions for 2015. The income would have been booked at the time of the sale since W is an accrual method business. Okay? So look, ladies and gentlemen, bad debt deduction. All you guys got to do is figure out how to enter the bad debt deduction on your Schedule C's. Pay attention now. Worthlessness can be established when a taxpayer sues the debtor. Arbitration wins a judgment and then shows the judgment is uncollectible. Ooh-wee! However, when the surrounding circumstances indicate the debt is worthless and uncollectible, and that legal action to collect the debt would, in all probability, not result in collection, proof of these facts is sufficient to justify deduction. Just exactly what the IRS said. So where they getting it from? Come on now. Evidence that the debtor is experiencing financial difficulties will not in and of itself support an argument of worthlessness. Yeah, because they can eventually get better. But if the debtor filed bankruptcy, however, generally does indicate that an unsecured business bad debt is at least partially worthless. Thus, retaining a copy of the bankruptcy notice should support at least the partial reduction of the value of a receivable and a non-collectible debt due to bankrupt business. Okay. Beyond cessation of the debtor's business and bankruptcy notice, the courts have accepted the following proof of debt value has declined and become worthless. The disappearance or death of an individual debtor. The uncollectability of a deficiency after the property securing the debt is sold. The writ of execution returned by the sheriff. The worthlessness of the judgment against the the worthlessness of a judgment against the the worthlessness of a judgment against the debtor. The worthlessness of an arbitration award judgment against the debtor. The worthlessness of an arbitration award judgment against the debtor. Pay attention. Observation, Mama. I meant observation. That fool just kept getting in my way. Just kept telling me he needed to see what was going on. I told him he didn't need to see what's going on. He said, that's my job. I said, no, that's my job. He said, no, that's his job. And man, the observation fool was getting on my nerves. So I just, you know, I, you know, I called my boys. Yeah. Anyway, absence of these items of proof, the taxpayer's best documentation is everything, is likely to be the detailed record of collection efforts. It's likely to be the detailed record of collection efforts. Documentation is everything. The record should indicate that the business made every effort a reasonable person would take to collect the debt. However, as noted previously, a taxpayer is not required to actually file a judgment against the debtor. If, based on the facts, the action obviously would not improve the collectability of that debt. That's what they're talking about. Pay attention. <sighs> When to claim a business bad debt deduction? A business bad debt can either be partially or totally worthless. If the taxpayer can collect some, but not all of the debt, it is a partially worthless debt. If the taxpayer cannot collect any of the remaining amount of the debt, now this is known as a totally or wholly worthless debt. All taxpayer, except for certain financial institutions, use specific charge-off methods 
to deduct business bad debts as they become partially or totally worthless. All taxpayers, except for certain financial institutions, pay attention, use specific charge-off method to deduct bad debts as they become partially or totally worthless. Deducting a partly worthless bad debt. Don't want, it, don't want that one. Deducting, nope, don't want the partly. We want this one. A totally worthless debt is deductible only in the tax year it becomes totally worthless. The deduction of the debt does not include the amount deducted in an earlier year when the debt was only partially worthless. Caution. Businesses, the business is not required to make the actual charge off on its books to claim the bad debt deduction for wholly worthless debt. However, it may want to do so in case the IRS later asserts that the debt was only partially worthless and disallows even the partial deduction since no charge off occurred. A deduction for a partially worthless debt is limited to the amount actually charged off in the books. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to pay attention to what's being said here. See, they keep changing the rules. A business is not required to make an actual charge off on its books to claim a bad debt deduction. So when the banks are claiming, when they're doing charge-offs, they don't actually have to do a charge-off to claim that the debt is totally worthless. They don't have to send you a 1099-C. That's what this is saying. That's why it says caution. Note, it is sometimes difficult to prove that a debt became worthless in a particular year. Pay attention to say that it can only be deducted for the year, ladies and gentlemen, that is wrong because now you can carry it forward to the next year. All right? When it became worthless in a particular year, if the IRS later maintains worthlessness occurred in a year other than the one in which the deduction was taken, the deduction may be lost because the statute of limitations for filing a refund claim has expired. For this reason, the IRS extends the statute of limitation for claiming a credit or a refund for bad debts for seven years rather than for the usual three years. If any doubt exists as to the proper tax year to claim a bad debt deduction, claiming a deduction in the earliest year, it could possibly be allowed as recommended. The claim should be viewed as a subsequent uh, should be re reviewed in a subsequent year and amended return filed for the original year. If facts develop indicating a latter year is proper for the claiming the deduction, ladies and gentlemen, should be reviewed in a subsequent year, an amended return filed for the original year, meaning they carried it forward. Lord have mercy. This case study has been adapted for PPC Guide to Tax Planning for High Income Individuals, 16th edition by this person. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go to the code because this is your research. I keep telling everybody. Now, look, there are some people who found this before me. Let me do that so that you guys will know. And those mother didn't tell me a thing. And I hope they get everything they got coming to them. I'm sitting up here, don't have the time to do all this research for you guys. I just don't have the time, people. There's too much going on. But these individuals got time. They're doing the research because they're trying to look out for themselves, selfish mother... And they're not telling me a thing. I am so grateful that I serve the God that I serve. Look, tax reduction letter. Ain't that a shame? Okay? So do yourselves a favor, ladies and gentlemen. Download this three-page document. Now, that is the code. Regulation. Section 166C. Bad debt. Hold on. Hold on. Let's put this in here. My dogs are whining because they want to come inside. I got them outside. B-A-D-D-E-B-T. I'll go get them in a minute. Because I'm tired and I'm about to go to sleep. Put this video up for y'all and go to sleep. <sighs> okay. Income Tax Act. Ladies and gentlemen, I had not heard of the Income Tax Act, but here's the actual act. This is what we do here. Now, wait, hold on, everybody. I could have kept this information to myself. But the moment I found it, I did this video. 
I even had a call on hold to start this video out because I wanted to get it to your attention as soon as possible. You want to write off your debt? You want to write off your bad debt? Here is the code, people. Follow the yellow brick code. Federal regulation, federal regulation. Got to go over all of this. You can't just go over this. You have to go over this and this and this and this. You have to go over all of the code to make sure you know what you're doing. We're going to be doing that. And we're going to be doing this for people. Don't rely on us. Do your research first so that we don't have to explain anything to you. Because you contact us asking for any of this information. Ladies and gentlemen, we're not going to give you any information. That's the way the organization works. We're not here to educate you. It's not our job. You are supposed to educate yourself. You go to Walmart to buy a lawnmower. Walmart is not there to tell you how the lawnmower works. You're supposed to read the instructions. We provide people contracts. We provide people trust agreements. And the next thing you know, they want us to explain to them everything. That's not our job. Sorry. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are one of those people who feel that you shouldn't have to do any research, that you're paying for the research, well then you give a couple hundred dollars more and we will take the time to explain everything to you. That's right. When I mean by a couple hundred dollars, I'm talking like a couple of two million hundred more dollars. Okay? Other than that, you're just going to have to ride or die. Come with me. Oh, I'm sorry. Apologize. What do we have here now? Do you want to ride or die? Ride or die? I got to go, y'all. Y'all see what type of day I'm having. Hey, I'm in a good mood because I found something I've been looking for that I told all of you about back in April. Ladies and gentlemen, I've known about this. But as you see, everything I've been telling you, que sera, sera. You find it. The IRS bad, bad debt, that IRS topic for 53, you notice how it did not mention anything about 26 CFR 1.166-1. You know it didn't talk about this. Now, hold on. I don't want you guys to misunderstand what's going on here. You see, that says bad debt. So we're going to go previous because we got to go previous because previous is important. Denial of deduction for losses of registration and required obligations not in registered form. So, ladies and gentlemen, I would be going over all of these codes before and after. See, this says income taxes. Income tax. Okay? I'd be going, oh, credits against tax. Let's do that one. Really? Let's do that one. Internal revenue. And then income tax on individuals, limitations on tax, change in rates applicable to tax years, capital gains, questions and answers. Tax in case of joint definition, special rules, application. Ladies and gentlemen, y'all got some studying to do. Okay? And I, I got to look. Okay, got to go, y'all. Y'all take care of yourself. I got work to do. And I'm going to go take care of myself. I got work to do. Adios.